please welcome Ori. Cinema 4D, big arrow. Okay. Now, when doing, when starting Cinema 4D, you, I, I didn't know anything, so I had to do a lot of research. So I spent at least like 20 hours just grinding out these like hour-long videos, 56 minutes, you know, 35. Just like one guy named Behind the Button who like made like 50 videos on this. What the case? Like, there's not a lot of tutorials about Cinema 4D. Um, they're all, all of them like very vague. So I had to basically just do this kind of on my own. Um, I, I got to learn the basics, but then after that, it was basically me. Um, so I just tried to get as much content as I could for Cinema 4D, and this is what I'm doing today. Um, so after doing that research, I just researched, I messed around with some little things, especially with performers. I did some really cool things with these performers. I like, my favorite one is the uh, jiggle one, because you can see it makes it jiggly <laughs> when, it, when it wiggles. So it's <laughs> that was pretty cool. Um, also, the squish one, I really like. Uh, <laughs> so many things I want to do. And what is the coolest thing in the world? A car race. <laughs> Racing cars are super awesome and really cool. Um, yeah, really cool. So, the first step in animating a car is, uh, yeah, when I was thinking about this, I was like, okay, what are the three most important things that makes a car animation look realistic? Okay, and this is what I came up with. I'm sure this theme is just a little familiar, and I'm sorry to be sketchy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, bad. Body banking is a very big part of a car of the wheels as it moves, and then the third one, suspension slash clamping of the wheels to the ground, right? These are all the, there's a ton of other things, but these are big, 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 uh, big parts. Now, how do I animate all this stuff in one go, instead of having to do like hand by hand each frame, you know, it's going to take hours to animate every single thing based off of a road, right? The solution to that is a rig, a car rig. Now, this looks a bit complicated, um, especially when I first saw this, I was like, oh my god, what is this? But you got to think about it, the car rig is a skeleton that the car basically wraps around and animates based off the movement of the rig, okay? Now, Cinema 4D, like I said, is, 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 is it's popular, but not really that much. Blender is a lot bigger. So there's not that many tutorials or really like a, a ton of free stuff out there that I could use for a car rig, especially not a good car rig. So I decided, why not like kind of change my project and just instead of just animating to actually making my own car rig. So I spent three to, like basically three fourths of this project just working on this car rig. And this is a tutorial that I made for the car rig, so I just press start again. Welcome to my somewhat of a tutorial on how to rig a car. Uh, today we're going to be using this car rig that I actually made myself, and I hope you guys enjoy. So I'm going to pull up my Cinema 4D file of the basic car rig that I made in Cursive um, for around like two weeks. Uh, hopefully this will be in the assets folder so that anybody can use it, but right now I'm just putting it up on my arm. Here it is. It's just a base car. We're going to change the geometry of it with the model that I have, but as you can see, this is what you're getting in so this is the car model that I found online. Before recording this, I already separated each wheel to the two hierarchy, the FR, FL, and the RBL, so those are all the wheels in this body. And what I'm going to do is go to the uh, car rig file right there, and I'm going to copy the entire car and paste it into the other file. So I have them both in the same file, and what I want to do now is align the white car perfectly with the red car. So it's as close as it can be without having to change any of the geometry right now. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go through the hierarchy and remove the geometry of the red car, which is this 
skeleton of the rig. So okay, here's the wheels, wheels. So now it's just the original white model that I want to use. So what I want to do is align the white car to the skeleton of the rig, as you can see with the, the circles and stuff like that. With the uh, Expresso Slush user M part of the hierarchy, you can change the width and the length of the wheels and the radius of the wheels itself. Um, you can just see the process of me doing that right now. I actually had the car tilted a little bit. Um, rotated, I think, like five degrees, so it did mess it up in the beginning, but I figured that out eventually and I fixed it. Um, but you actually just want to go step by step by step with every display to see that the wheels are perfectly distant from each other, like the skeleton is perfectly aligned with the wheels of the actual car. And so now that we're done with that, we're going to now get the actual model of the car and align it with the skeleton of the rig by yeah, moving each wheel one by one so it's all aligned perfectly. If you have a freight caliper, you can also add those, but I just have the wheels and the car. Now you're basically done. If you move the car using the controls, you can actually see that the wheels rotate on their own, just based on the car moving back and forth, which is so cool. And there's so many other things that we can do with this. So let's see if this tackles banking and turning. You can go to controls and check on the drifting. Oh, it's just drift. But if we go on the banking, there, you see that I can move back and forth based on the car itself, not just relative to the actual world. And it banks perfectly well. And my favorite part of this entire rig that I made is when we go to the wheels. So we're going to go to the wheels next. And if we try to spin the wheels now, you see that the car doesn't bank automatically. And that's because when you use the controls, there's actually a button that says auto banking on slash off. And if we turn that on, now it banks automatically. And so you can see here, boom, it saves so much time and animation and it just makes that car movement look so much more realistic. And it just looks so rewarding to see it actually happen. And so how do we now abuse the animated car movement? So my favorite part. first is going to make this plane down so it actually looks a little bit nicer. I'm going to put a checkerboard matter pattern on this just so it, the depth of the, of the plane actually is visible. So a built-in tag is going to work with this tool called the line display, where it's similar to uh, the pen tool in like After Effects and stuff, but where you can just draw a path, it's basically like a pen tool. And what you can do is, I already got the tag built in there in the controls, is you can take that spline and drag it into the path with the alignment spline tag. And then now you can move the car's position throughout that path, you know, and you can animate it where you want. So what I'm going to do now is go to the end of the animation and just make it so it moves a little bit and go to the beginning. And then now you can see it's automatically the car accelerates and then slows down. So it looks a little bit realistic. I spent like two weeks straight up until like 5 a.m. every day getting this rig to work. And I'm very glad that it is. And it's very fulfilling. And hopefully this will be in the assets of a folder somewhere so other people can use it if you want. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks. Okay, so that was like basically a three fourths of my project. Um, and then now it goes to the actual hardest part, which is, oh, never mind. I had to make a storyboard for my animation. Obviously, I have to make an animation, right? Did, whew, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> it's some, yeah, storyboard. So I had to have some idea of what I wanted to do. Um, and then now it goes to the hard part, <laughs> the rendering. The actual, this thing sucks so much, I, it's so annoying. So what I used, right, is Cinema 4D, and like I said previously, Cinema 4D does not support GPU-based rendering. So we have to think of a different way to use this, a uh, different way to render. So we have to use a third-party plugin, and I found the only free one, like ever, I found it like on the 10th tab of Google. Oh, this is actually the time that it would take if you used a CPU. I made this in After Effects Studio, and that's why. It's super long time if you don't use a CPU. But I found this really niche thing called Centileo, and it was only in Spanish. <laughs> I don't speak Spanish, but uh, that's, that's just to prove how weird this was. Centileo plugin to Stream Max Cinema 4D. Okay, right? Um, and what it said was that, ooh, up to 5x faster rendering. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is perfect. So I tried to render my animation for a bit, which like literally three hours for like maybe 10 seconds. I was like, oh, okay. And it was, they lied. Five, 51 minutes for like a quarter of the animation. I was like, there's gotta be something wrong. You know, I try to fix some settings. Ah, another 50 minutes for like half of a render. It was like, oh my gosh, this is horrible. So I was like, you know, I'm just gonna deal with it. I'd rather waste the time. So I was just like, okay, I'm gonna spend like five minutes, five hours just rendering this thing. So this is my 20 second animation that, set, that took five hours to render. Uh, very fun. Um, final product, here we go, Skippy.
that was a challenge for that, at least. And also, like, there were a ton of other questions that would make it easier, but I didn't want to keep going to Mr. Taylor saying, can I please download this? Can I please download this? Because I needed the, he knows, I literally asked, like, 16 times. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was like, I need the admin password to download to, like, plug in that, it's like, oh. But yeah, so I was like, I'm going to do it. Why not? I don't know. I thought, I, 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 what I wanted to do originally, I wanted to have, like, a crazy car crash, but I was like, I can't make cars crash in real life. And then I realized I can't make cars crash in animation, so I'm not talented uh, in that. <laughs> uh, for now. For now. But this is our, our thing. Cinema 4D was challenging in some ways, and the render times were too long. But so, but what is the advantage to it then over Blender? I know you touched on it a little bit, but I'd like to. Yeah. Know. So the advantage is so Blender is a lot is used a lot more for modeling um, rather than animation, and Cinema 4D is really really good with animation. It's a lot more customizable, and also like I said earlier, there's a ton of like all the deformers and stuff. Uh, if I go back, ah, it's too late. Okay. But all like the deformers and everything, there's a ton of built-in plugins that I wouldn't have to like download externally, which would save also you uh, the annoyance of me. Um, so I think it was was originally uh, better to use, and I've also never used it. So and like some of that stuff that you're talking about with like the, the banking, like that automatic, like yeah, does, does that exist in Blender or is that no? Okay. Um, but with Blender though, however, it's a lot more popular. So obviously, like a car rig, you can probably find online for Blender. But for Cinema 4D, it's like there is nothing, like like nobody like touches this. Like yeah, I learned more from scratch. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Ari.